Will it be one for the snow lovers filled with cold and snow? Or one for those that like it on the mild side? This is the November edition of the 22-23 Winter Outlook. Hey, what's up? I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. We talk and track all things weather. We're going to break down the upcoming winter in order. First, starting with some of the driving forces that could impact the season ahead. Then we're going to break down some of the climate models and talk about some of the clues that they are hinting at going forward. And then I'm going to show you what I think is going to happen for the winter ahead. This year, it's all about La Nina. It's actually a triple dip La Nina. For the last two winters, we've been under the influence of this pattern. It doesn't happen all that often, so it's going to be crazy to watch the progression of this winter. So not many analogs to go off of, but nonetheless... We are back under the influence. Again, you can see that by looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies. The blue there, the cooler than normal water temperatures off of the coast of South America. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would love it if you hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out a lot. I would also like to know where you are tuning in from. Please post that in the comments below and we can have that conversation about the upcoming winter. Here's a little foreshadowing into the forecast that I'm going to give you coming up in a couple of minutes. But the strongest signals that we are getting so far, at least from a climate model perspective, and again the La Nina... It's going to be the wetter than normal west and then also a wetter than normal Great Lakes region. You can see that here highlighted specifically for the upcoming December. This is the CFS V2 model. It's a climate model. And you see the darker greens really from Montana, Idaho, and then certainly near the Cascades in Northern California. This is something you certainly typically see in a La Nina. But again, we're getting some of the strongest signals there as well. That signal also being highlighted in the Great Lakes. Now, on the opposite side of that spectrum, in a La Nina year, we're drier and warmer than normal, typically, along the south and southeast. You see all that brown, we are expecting much drier and warmer conditions in the south. This is specifically, again, looking at December. This is the same model for the month of December, and you see the orange. It's certainly hinting at a warmer than normal setup for December. I would tend to agree with this because what we are watching in terms of the jet stream, I think it's going to be more west to east, more flat out. So I don't think we're going to see a ton of big storms in December. I think we could see more of those little clipper type systems moving across the northern tier of the country. You see the 500 millibar now. This is going to be the anomaly, and we do have that kind of ridging up in the north and west. Nothing too crazy at this point, but again, I do think we could see some of those clippers developing over the Canadian Rockies, riding that down through the Dakotas, Minnesota, and then eventually into the Great Lakes and part of the Mid-Atlantic. Now, we're fast-forwarding into January, and you see a little bit of a change here. You see that blue pop up over the Hudson Bay. This is where we can start to th see things turn a little interesting for the snow lovers out there. Looks like we have more of a ridge in the west, more of a trough or dip in the jet stream in the east, which will promote colder than normal temperatures surging back in to the eastern two-thirds of the country. Turning on the temperature anomaly, you kind of see that reflected here a little bit. Now, most of the cold, the core of the cold, is going to focus along the northern tier of the country. We still need that jet stream to buckle a little bit to allow the temperatures to come back down. But I do think more often than not in January, this is going to be the month for our cold outbreaks and then the snow. I know there's a lot going on on these maps, but I wanted to bring you guys in and show you exactly what I'm looking at that influenced my decision on what I'm forecasting for the upcoming winter. So stick around for a couple more minutes, and then we're going to get to that map. We're looking at January now, and it tells the same kind of story in the precip department. Higher than normal precipitation out west, Dakotas, Montana, into Washington and Oregon, and then also the higher than normal precip in the Great Lakes area. Of course, higher than normal precip, colder than normal temperatures. That's going to equal a better opportunity for snow once we get into January. You see across the deep south, though, through Texas, getting into the southeast, and then across the desert southwest, drier than normal, likely going to continue into January. Ah, look at this. The wetter than normal areas expand in February. We're certainly keeping the bullseye in those two areas we've been talking about in the west and then also the Great Lakes. We're still going to be drier than normal as we get into the deep south. Now, the one deal as we get into January and February, the Gulf of Mexico is still very, very warm. It's above normal in that department. As we have these dips in the jet stream and these blasts of cold coming down, we could increase our severe weather threat across the south. All right. 
In the temperature department for February, it looks like the cold is even more expansive. You're certainly seeing the cold forced up in the west a little bit more towards Alaska and towards British Columbia, and then allowed to escape more into the eastern two-thirds of the country. I think it's going to be a little bit further south than what this model is predicting. Nonetheless, there is that pattern of the ridge out west, trough in the east, that's going to force the warmth to the south and then allow those cold outbreaks likely to continue into February. All right, here we go. This is what I think is going to happen this winter. Again, we talked about the strongest signals, and we're going to the west first. Of course, I do think we're going to see a lot of snow in the Cascades this year. Where you see the green, that's what we're talking about. A lot of snow, again, through the Cascades. A lot of lower elevation rain. It might be cold enough for some snow to mix in on occasion. And then, of course, snow back through Idaho and then into Montana, into Wyoming. I think we're going to have enough cold there to have a lot of snow there this winter as well. I think the strongest signal for the above average moisture, though, is going to be in Idaho, through Washington, Oregon, and into Northern California. Going east, the other strong signal that we talked about was into the Great Lakes. I think we're going to have the highest combination of both precipitation and cold towards the Great Lakes region into the upper Midwest as well. So places like Minnesota, maybe the eastern, the eastern Dakotas through Iowa, getting into Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin. I think that's where we're going to have the highest probability of the moisture to meet up with the cold. The bigger questions uh, determining if that can happen or not are going to be in the northeast. I think that there's going to be an opportunity for a couple of big snowstorms, mainly in the New Jersey, New York, and into Maine area. I'm not sold on it, but with a pattern that we're going to see, likely a La Nina again, or it will be a La Nina, the pattern is something like this. And especially into January and into February, I think that pattern becomes more likely. What happens in a pattern like this, you get these clipper systems to roll across the country. They make it out over the relatively warmer Atlantic and then form into a nor'easter and then just blast the northern portion of the I-95 corridor. So the questions are, as we get deeper into winter, will that pattern set up and will that moisture meet up with the cold? The Atlantic is above normal, so we're going to need a lot of cold to offset some of that warmer air that is sliding in. Where we are going to have plenty of warm air is in the south and likely even up into the Carolinas as well as we move into the winter months again through the south, certainly into Florida and the deep south. I think it's going to be really dry and really warm. Again, such as typical in a La Nina, that is likely going to extend back into the desert southwest. One of the wild cards is typically it's the El Nino year that will give the deep south a better opportunity for severe weather because we have a more active subtropical jet to bring some of that wind energy into the deep south i do think though as we get some of these dips in the jet stream into january and february as the gulf of mexico also remains much above average in terms of the water temperature we could see in this area albeit more often than not it's going to be dry and warm we could have a couple of rounds of severe weather as we move into January and February specifically. So that is something that we are going to watch closely as we move into the winter months. All right, so there is your overview of what I think is going to happen and what some of the climate models think are going to happen as well as we move into the winter. Remember, that is all averaged over the three-month period of December, January, and February. Even in a really cold winter, it can still get really warm at times and vice versa. So while I do think we're going to be on the warmer side getting into December, I think the hammer kind of comes down a little bit in those areas, again, mainly east of the Rockies and really towards the Great Lakes as we move into January and February. The last few Decembers have been pretty warm. I think that's going to hold true once again. If you have any thoughts on this winter, please post them in the comments below. We'll continue that conversation. I'm planning on doing another one of these in a month, in the middle of December. We're going to check up on how things are going so far. We're going to look to see if some of those signals are still there, if they're getting weaker, if they're getting stronger, so they can play out the second part of December, January, and then, of course, into February. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you liked the content, please hit that thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. And please hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you in this weather community. We talk and track all things weather together. If you hit the alert bell, you will be notified to any time we post new content. 
Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time.